Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and it's time for my inevitable Great American Solar Eclipse video. Yes, unless you have been hiding under a rock, you might have heard that there is going to be a total solar eclipse. Of course, watching a total solar eclipse is actually equivalent to hiding under a big rock and looking at the sun. Regardless, you know, this is a big opportunity for people living in the USA. The eclipse is going to run from coast to coast with an eclipse path up to 70 miles wide in locations. It's the first time we've had an eclipse that covers this many states in like 100 years. And the next time you're going to have a solar eclipse, in a total solar eclipse in the USA is going to be 2024. So when you hear that half of the US population is one day's driving distance and you're, you're fearing the terrible traffic and stupidly expensive hotels and overbooked campsites, just realize it's going to be seven years before you have a chance to see another one. That being said, while there's a lot of good information on the eclipse, the mechanics behind it, and of course lots of warnings about not looking directly at the sun, there is a lot of misinformation about just exactly how sun damage works. This is a really interesting phenomenon, and it turns out that I actually have a, a relative. We call him Uncle Larry, but other people call him Dr. Lawrence Yanuzzi. He's an ophthalmologist, and we've talked about this in the past because he actually did some uh, research on what's called solar retinopathy. Uh, he did one study where they looked at a number of people that had come into hospitals complaining of damaged eyes, you know, vision problems. Every single one of them was asked, did you look at the sun? Every single one of them said, no, I wouldn't be that stupid. But they almost certainly were. So if you look at a lot of the news reports, what it will say is that the sun damages the back of the eye by heating it, right? It's a thermal process. And that seems very logical. You know, the, the lens in the eye is focusing the image of the sun down to an area roughly 0.16 millimeters across. And it's easy to imagine that the heat from the sun could heat up the retina and cook it like an egg. Even more easy to imagine if you've ever taken a lens and actually used it to set things on fire, right? But the aperture that it's coming through is very small. When you're staring at the sun, or uh, if you're stupid enough to do that, let's say, the, uh, the iris contracts down so the pupil is maybe two to three millimeters across. So it's a very small area. Also, the eye is mostly water, and water is much better at taking away heat than the air that uh, we would normally be setting things on fire with. So when you study it, the temperature of the retina actually rises by only about 4 degrees centigrade, which isn't enough to cause the proteins to denature and trigger photocoagulation. So that isn't the main way that the eye gets damaged by uh, looking at the sun for too long. No, the real process is something called photochemical reactions. That is where the energy of photons hits molecules and triggers chemical transitions in them. And while the eye works by this method, right, the pigment basically accepts a photon and uses that to convert one molecule into another molecule and that acts as a signaling molecule to the nerves. Sometimes the photons can hit other things and cause unnecessary or undesired chemical changes. One example is a molecule could get hit, uh, an atom could get raised into an excited state, and then along comes an oxygen molecule and really likes this excited atom. So a chemical reaction happens, free radicals end up floating around your eye cells and damaging them. The eye is obviously continually repairing against these kind of things, but if you look at the sun for far too long, then these uh, reactions, these bad reactions, will overwhelm the cell, eventually to the point where it's unable to repair itself and dies. I should also point out that this process is distinct from retinal bleaching. Now, retinal bleaching is what occurs when you see a bright light like a flash, and it leaves an after image on your eye for a short amount of time. The, as I mentioned, the, the, the pigment, when it hits, gets hit by a photon, it causes a chemical reaction that creates a signal. Um, well, what happens is if there's not enough, uh, if these things get overexcited, then it runs out of the signaling chemical because it takes time to be recycled. And so those cells that are hit by a bright light will become less sensitive for an amount of time. And this is actually totally normal. It's like a natural reaction to your eye, uh, your eyes basically throttling back the amount of nerve impulses it's sending to the brain. So on top of the pupil uh, contracting and expanding to change the amount of light, your eye, the actual surface, the sensitive photo surface of the eye is changing its sensitivity as well over time. 
Again, yeah, that's separate and it doesn't last long term because it's merely a deficiency in the amount of chemical and that will get recycled in fairly short order. Whereas damage caused by photochemical reactions will maybe take several hours to really kick in and people don't notice the effect until the next day and then things can get really bad. There is a third form of light damage that can occur and that is photoacoustic. This is really scary. This is where you've accidentally looked into a bright laser, a pulse laser for a very short amount of time. And this is like a thermal process, but the heat happens so quickly that it literally creates a little bubble of steam, cavitation, and that creates an acoustic wave which damages the eye around it. This is not something you want to happen, obviously. Um, now, the photothermal process, incidentally, is actually used in certain types of eye surgery. For example, if there is a tumour on the back of the eye, you can zap it by using a, a laser which will focus on that specific point. So it has its therapeutic uses, but you generally won't see it from staring at the sun unless you are stupid enough to stare at it with a telescope or binoculars, in which case, of course, the extra optics from that may in fact raise the temperature of your retina above the above about 10 degrees and then you're straight into you know egg cooking territory there yeah there you have it the actual process by which the eye gets damaged it's not like a thermal burn it's more like a sunburn now i've heard some other interesting statements from people one thing i've heard is a lot of people don't realize that if you are under the path of totality during totality you're supposed to take your glasses off so you can actually see the corona, right? That moment where the moon completely covers the sun and there is no disk of the sun. If you have your eclipse glasses on, you're not going to see anything. You've got to take them off so you can actually see the solar corona around the sun, the plasma, potentially prominence as various other things. But be aware, as soon as the sun comes back, you've got to get that protection back on because your eyes have been adjusting to the dark, the pupil may have expanded, and you know, bad things happen. It's also a bad idea to, um, if you're wearing the glasses and it gets down to a very small segment, don't take your glasses off until just, uh, until just after totality happens. And the reason is you want your eyes to be as dark adapted as possible so you can see as much uh, detail as possible. If you, uh, if you take your glasses off at any point beforehand, you might have some sort of limited flash blindness and then you're not going to see anything. So just be very careful about this. Hell, sit in a dark place when totality is like five minutes away. Get your eyes totally adapted and then it will be glorious. Also, Nibiru is not going to come and crash into the earth. If you really think the world is going to end next Monday, can I have your stuff? If you truly believe this, you're not going to need it. And finally, I know it's really annoying to have the eclipse on the first day of school for many of you, but despite what you may think, we cannot change the date to the weekend to make it more convenient. The only time I've heard the date of an eclipse being changed was by Ming the Merciless in the movie Flash Gordon, which is one of my favourite movies ever and you should all totally go and watch it sometime. Now I personally, I'm going to be in Corvallis, Oregon trying to get some pictures just taking in the sights. It's my first chance or it's my, it'll hopefully be my first time seeing a solar eclipse. The last time I went on a special journey to see a solar eclipse, I was on a ship in the middle of uh, the North Sea, or sorry, the Irish Sea, looking you know, as the astronomer, teaching people about what a wonderful sight they were going to see. And then the moment came and it was cloudy. And so I was standing on deck saying, yes, this is what you would see if it wasn't for those amazing clouds eclipsing the sun. Yeah, I'm hoping it's going to be a whole lot better next week, and maybe I'll see some of you up there. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.